Okay, guys, so here we are on to the next step. We're going to check the piston ring side clearance. Now, this is different than what we checked before. Before, we were checking the piston ring end gap. Um, so what we want to do is, so we've got our rings here. And first, let's start off with this. If you look out there, you will probably not find side clearances for your main compression ring. Why? Because your main compression ring is a keystone ring, which means, you see that? It's shaped like a keystone. So that guy obviously isn't going to give us a consistent re reading because it tapers down there. Um, so those guys you don't have to worry about. Let me set that guy back behind there. So let's go ahead and grab our intermediate ring. Um, and so what we're going to do here is we're going to take the intermediate ring. And actually, for the sake of doing this, I'm going to do it how it's supposed to be done. Um, we'll be installing, this is an O3 motor, so we'll be installing the bevel down on this motor, uh, which means the numbers will be down, not up. Um, 12 valves and earlier 24 valves, um, pre-common rail. It would go like this, and you can see if I get it just right. It's having a hard time focusing on that. Anyway, there's a series of numbers there. Let's see if I can... There we go. Series of numbers there. Usually the dot or the number faces up. Now, we've already gapped all of these. Which you can see the marks on the end gap there and where it's been beveled. Um, so what we're doing now is we're putting these in. We're going to check them across several points so I'm just gonna get it's hard to hold the camera and do this and you can see that's a four thousandths whoops no you can't because I was facing the wrong way that's a four thousandths uh, feeler gauge and it just starts to go in there if we're holding and I've checked all these already so if we stick it in there um, it just barely starts to go in there and then it gets tight. So we're less than four thousandths, which is good. The max on these guys, I think, is four or six. Um, just a second, let me. Look at the book. The max on the middle ring. So now we're coming back here. Max on the middle ring is six, and we're definitely tighter. We're about three on this guy. And the max on the oil control. This guy is five. Um, now both of these guys are tighter than five. I haven't seen any binding, um, so we're good to go on this set of rings here. But I just wanted to show you, so we'll take this intermediate ring out and set it back there. And then we're gonna take this guy and we do the exact same thing with the oil control. We come in here, sorry I'm holding it square in the bore, and we can't get our 4,000s feeler gauge even help if I had more hands um, uh, even to start in there so this guy right here is tighter than four which is okay but it does not bind um, it's got free movement in there all across so what we do is we take that we'd rotate the piston and we would check it in another spot now I've already checked this is the number one cylinder and so we'd go through and we do it all across the board and the intermediate ring is consistent across the board. And so is the oil control. The oil control is tighter than four thousandths. And the, the intermediate is right at about four thousandths. Again, the specs for this is the intermediate ring is going to be uh, less than six. That six is the maximum. And the oil control is five or less without binding, obviously. Uh, all right, so there's that step, and then now we will catch you on the next video.